All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got my man, Michael Knowles, back in the building talking about the separation of church and state and how people have twisted that phrase. And it's not even possible to apply in the real world that we live in today. So I've already seen this link, the full thing down below in the description section of the presentation that he did at Georgetown. Highly recommend it. It's a doozy for sure. And the way he breaks things down is phenomenal. So stay to until after the clip if you want to hear me rant and give my perspective let's get it popping i found your remarks very thoughtful but i did have a problem so at the risk of paraphrasing uh, you describe liberty as the ability to conform more closely to the will of god you describe the government's provision of choice on matters of contraception abortion at least for adults as an attack on liberty as you define it you found it important to remark that joe biden the president acts against his private faith as a catholic in support of abortion, contraception, and whatnot. So my question is, do you not find it important to separate church and state? What is your view on the public atheist and the private practicer? N not only do I not find it important, I don't find it possible. <laughs> I don't see any way that one could separate church from state. It's never happened ever in the history of our country or any other country. The the, the unfortunate phrase in our national context comes from the private writing of Thomas Jefferson. You won't find it anywhere in the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. The Constitution provides in the First Amendment that there will be no established church at the federal level. Uh, the reason for that is not because they wanted the country to be atheist, but because there were already established churches at the state level, which persisted for decades after ratification. Uh, John Adams was clear about this. He famously said that the, country, the Constitution is only built for a moral and religious people, which was not just soft soap and a nice little sentimental quote. Uh, that, that is just a fact about how the Constitution works and how free people can, can operate. Uh, John Jay said much the same thing. So many of the founding fathers said the same thing. Uh, the other reason why you, you can't separate church from state is that uh, any law presupposes a religious view because all law ultimately refer to the moral law, and the moral law has recourse to religion. I mentioned earlier what religion is. Religion is a habit of virtue that inclines the will to render to God what God deserves. That, that's all it is. And, and so uh, if we're going to pass a law about abortion, then we, we need to make some moral argument. Uh, for instance, it's, it's bad to slaughter babies would be, I think, the good argument, and the weak argument is women should be able to do whatever they want and sleep with terrible men. I don't think that's very convincing, but that's the argument that the libs make, and, and it's a moral argument too. And you, you battle those out and you see which one has the stronger moral reasoning. But this is true even if you're talking about laws about parking tickets, even if you're talking about the marginal corporate tax rate. Ultimately, you must make moral arguments. And we can't avoid politics, obviously. We're talking about government. We're standing here in the nation's capital. We can't avoid politics because man is not an island entire unto himself. Man is the social creature and the political animal. We are meant to live together. And at the most fundamental level, we're, we're coupling creatures. So men are for women in families, which is the bedrock of society, and the rest of society springs up from that. Uh, so, so we can't avoid that question, and we are made in the image and likeness of God, whether we want to admit it or not. You know, I, I have no problem with our atheist friends. I was an atheist myself for 10 years, so I have a great deal of sympathy. But uh, their, their delusions uh, uh, do not contradict the way that societies have always worked for all of human history, or rather they don't, they don't uh, mean that we have to upend the way that society really works. Man, being made in the image and likeness of God, will find his true end only in God. The very fact that we can speak intelligibly and you can understand what I'm saying and vice versa by these symbols that are coming out of our mouths that refer to some objective reality outside of us is because the universe is intelligible because it was created by an intelligence. And so, you know, if, if you want to have a flourishing country, you have to presuppose that God exists. That's what our founding fathers did. Even the most liberal among them, Thomas Jefferson was kind of the lib of the founding fathers. But don't forget, in, in the Declaration of Independence, he says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. So the country presupposes the existence of God. Thank, thank God that that is the case, or the country would not have lasted two weeks. And as our country turns away from God, you see those institutions crumbling. Because John Adams was right 
and the Reddit tier atheists who insist that we throw out the entirety of accumulated wisdom from all of human history are unsurprisingly not right. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. Great to be with you here at Georgetown. Thank you. See you next time on the town. As y'all just witnessed, that's gooder than chicken right there. It doesn't get much better than that sort of explanation. He nailed it right on target. And I think legit, Michael Knowles is one of the most brilliant, biblically discerned and convicted speakers in our world today. Absolutely necessary that we hear voices like his on a regular basis. And God bless and protect this man because these are the kinds of people and, and the wisdom that we need to be influenced by to help keep us aligned with the truth. And without God's word, there is no truth. You may disagree. That doesn't change what the fact actually is. That still remains contrary to popular belief. But sadly, most media figureheads and educators in these school systems and even a lot of pastors today have perverted scripture and the founding documents of our great nation, the Constitution and all of that to to fit their narrative in this this new school woke agenda. But nobody, no matter how clever and devious that they are, nobody can change the moral foundation of what's right and wrong, what's right righteous versus sin. So abortion, aka murder and slaughter of innocent life, wrong, er, like not appropriate, not acceptable, shouldn't be allowed to happen from conception. That's when a life becomes a life. That's when you get that unique set of genetic DNA to the point where the baby is in the womb to where they're birthed onto this earth. Nobody should have the right to take a life innocently, a baby's or a grown person just out of convenience, out of you wanting to. That's that's never a necessity. It shouldn't be allowed and, and whatsoever. In any case scenario, you'll never be able to get it through to my thick skull that that's appropriate. And God said, it's not. So it's not. He knew us in the womb, knitted us in our mother's womb. So that's the way it is. The almighty does not make mistakes. And that the same thing is wrong about sexual immorality, idolatry, gluttony, drunkenness, envy, witchcraft, all wrong. And yet all people, including myself, have been guilty of one or more of those things at some point in time, which is the exact reason why that we, we need laws and we need structure and we need boundaries and the playbook, that Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth that tells us how not to wind up in complete chaos and, and let our wicked hearts lead us astray and forever away from God. The heart of man is wicked, so wicked and deceitful that we can't even put it into context and fully know it and explain it. So we the people, we got to stand firm in righteousness and do what we know is the correct thing to do. We have to hold true to the fruits of the spirit. And our great nation was established by godly men, not perfect men, because none of us are that, but they understood that. And those guys were very wise and they structured these laws around the perfect one, the rock, the Messiah, and the moral compass that we all should be looking to Jesus Christ. And I already know some people in my comments, those keyboard warriors or behind the computer screen gangsters, like they're going to disagree and say America is not a godly nation. It's not a Christian nation. It wasn't founded upon God. Wrong. In the Constitution, it literally refers to how we define the date as the year of our Lord. Today, when I'm recording this video, is September 28th in the year of our Lord, 2023. That means that 2,023 years ago, Jesus Christ was born. Christmas Day, the only federal holiday that's also a religious holiday. Christmas, that's where it comes from. I know it's become a cultural thing, but the, the foundation of it, when it was established, Christ must. The day Jesus was born 2,023 years ago. You can't change that fact. You can run from it, try to misconstrue it and twist it and, and label it falsely, whatever you want to, but that's what it is. Facts don't care about your feelings, as Ben Shapiro would say, which is kind of you know, that's kind of ironic because Ben Shapiro also doesn't look to Jesus Christ. So he doesn't have the most important fact of all time. Correct. But at least Michael Knowles does. So I keep praying for Ben and people that don't know the truth. We used to have school textbooks once upon a time, at least when I was coming up in the, the public school realm. God is good. Thank the Lord that I made it out. But those textbooks used to say B.C. and A.D., which means before Christ and after death. Before Christ was born, before he came into the equation, God humbled himself to be like man, Jesus Christ. And then after death, after he was resurrected and then gave us a way out, you know, when you look to him, you have eternal salvation. That used to be real clear cut and dry and in the textbooks, but now things have gone secular. And I heard it was adjusted to BCE, which means before common era. It, it, that's what some of these godless curriculums now promote. 
And that, that's just garbage. It's hot garbage. And I'll never get down with it. It's never true. But don't worry. They won't get away with it. We already know what happens to instructors and teachers and professors that lead kids and students away from following Jesus. And in case you don't, Luke 17 verse 2 says, It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. That would be a better alternative than what they got coming for him. So if our education system continues to go against the word of God, they have a very rude and toasty permanent trip to look forward to someday if they don't repent and, and start going down the narrow path that leads to life. Because right now they're pursuing the wide path that leads to destruction that many people go down. I'm not saying that they're on their own, but they're on their own accord right now. They need to look to Jesus. Ain't none of this stuff around us an accident. There, there's no such thing as happenstance or just a coincidence. There's a reason that the Bible is the single most influential book of all time in all of Western civilization. It's the most read. It's the most discussed, interpreted, and it's not even close. It's a landslide and then some. The Bible is inerrant and infallible, and God used those human authors that, that wrote the good book, this thing right here, to write exactly what he wanted accomplished and without error. God is perfect. He judges perfectly. Everything about the creator is perfect. So the best thing that all of us can do is to repent of our sins and to put our faith in in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way that you get to eternal life. That's the way that you never have to taste death. People that don't look to Jesus, it's not going to end well. I promise you, you had all the chances in the world to have your heart transformed, to reach repentance, and to put your faith in the Lord. Put everything that you do into the creator of all things. And we need to dive into scripture for ourselves so that we're able to discern what is righteous versus lawless and what's going on in the world, how we can discern and see, okay, we can spot that's not right. That's not leading to anything promising. And, and we don't have any excuse of not knowing how we're supposed to operate on a day-to-day -day basis with the decisions that we all choose to make. You got a, a route you could take. The Lord always gives us a path. He, you can lean into lust and pervasive thoughts and, and all the sins of the world, or you can choose to to go the tried and true way, the way that God designed things to go. Human nature has fallen, going back to Adam and Eve in the garden, but God always gives us a way to choose how to overcome that. He always gives you a way out of whatever situation, circumstance, and obstacle that you may face. Contrary to popular belief, what people like to tell you, God is still in control. He always will be. He's never lost the reins. So I'll wrap this all up with some biblical soul food for us to digest, and then we can all go out and serve the kingdom and, and be salt and light of the earth. That's what we need to do. So Philippians 4, verse 4 through 13, this is a long one. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Amen. What do y'all think about all this? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to like this video by smashing the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. Just in case YouTube forgets to let you know, I appreciate you. I love y'all for doing so. If you want to take it a step further, you like what we're doing over here, you want to show a little extra love and support, by no means do you have to, but you can get awesome designs like this confidence, knowing I can't, but he can. These designs are made over my wife's Etsy store by her, customized in-house, all of that, insulated tumblers, petite, teat, small sizes to big, big and hefty for the 5X folks out there, all different sizes and colors. Like I said, we don't discriminate. We appreciate y'all. It goes a very long way in allowing me to continue to do what I do. All my other links are down below in the description section. Shout out to the Patreon, buy me a coffee fam. Anybody who's ever joined the Gibson family on YouTube by hitting that little join button and becoming a member, 
I'm so grateful for y'all. I can't thank you enough and put into words and context just how appreciative I am for you guys showing up every single video and allowing my freckle face to rant at you. I just, I just love y'all so much. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'll be praying for you. Until next time, Godspeed. I'm gone.